<clears throat> so today's topic is um, 2D meshing on the left. We have classic on the right. We have the new um, interface. I'm going to use the same model as the other day. Um, just remember quickly the create uh, mid surface option here. Um, grab that and hit extract. Uh, we would expect the, the mid surface between these two versions to be no different, um, to be honest. Uh, grab the solid and hit mid surface. And uh, I'm just going to start with the mid-surface because it'll be easier to deal with. Um, and there's a few things I want to do. So uh, let's let's go back and focus on, on classic. So I'll hide the solid, just look at the mid-surface here. And I'm not going to clean this up either. So if you were looking at the topology, you'd say this is crummy. And, and I'd agree with you. There's some things that need to be fixed, but uh, watch last week. Right. If we think about um, the the two D mesh F twelve, some of you are are well aware of the function key to get there. Um, the two D auto mesh uh, is probably one of the more more used tools here, um, in which you would specify which surfaces you'd like, the element type, you know, different uh, element size type, um, where they get collected, first order, second order. All of these different options are in here. I'm just going to keep the, the basics, and we're going to mesh a couple surfaces at a time just to kind of show you what some of these do. All right, so uh, click on a surface. Uh, to firstly, you should know what the mesh size is. I have no idea. Hopefully, you're using this little, uh, what is this, display scale option. Um, and I see, you know, 0 .03, 0 0.03. That's probably pretty small. Should I scale this model up? I probably should if I'm being honest with myself because... Oh, we should always be honest with ourselves. Um, okay, so I'm just going to grab all these surfaces and scale them up by a factor of a thousand, just to have that. I guess it says uniform scale. Okie dokie. So now we're at like 60. And again, what is this? 60 inches, centimeters? Uh, you know, elephants? I have no idea. It's just 60. Okay, so back to uh, meshing. Great. Sorry, little tangent there. Uh, so a mesh size, you know, if we kind of scroll in, not a big measure. Those holes are about four or five, uh, you know, elephants big. Um, maybe we want a mesh size about five. Okay. For arrow, we're probably always wanting to do quads, right? So quads only is probably what most of my arrow peeps are doing. We go ahead and hit mesh, and we come up to something like this, right? And this is what we call the interactive mode. So this does allow you to go in and adjust the edges, right? So I can come to 17 and by left clicking, I will increase the node seating. Uh, it doesn't automatically update, so I would have to go and hit mesh again down here. And then right click, remember, is decrease for some reason. Um, I guess that made sense back in the 80s. But now we kind of expect right click to give you like a menu of, you know, copy paste of different, you know, Microsoft-y type things. Uh, we could also set edges, calculate those different types of things. Um, so this was kind of the most basic option, right? So let's go ahead and, and return, and let's move on to a different surface. Uh, one of the things that you might have done in this workflow um, is looked at something like this panel and hit mesh. And what you would really like in your heart of hearts is that this is basically a square, right? Or, or, or something where... There's not really a good excuse to have 15 nodes on one side and 16 nodes on the other, and then you know 10 and 9. So um, you would probably increase this to 10, and hit mesh, and increase this to uh, 16 to get rid of that triangle, hit mesh, and then you get a nice panel mesh, right? Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. So um, if you were a, a clever individual, like most of us are, you probably link opposite aspect ratio. There's a little checkbox down here. Uh, so when you click and mesh a surface, uh, these would be linked for you automatically, right? And then any change to one of the linked edges would continue that link throughout its life cycle, right? So uh, by changing just the right one, the left one would change, and then you hit mesh. Okay. So, um, you know, at a, at a basic level, this was the interactive meshing um, that we had. And then keep in mind, you can remesh elements themselves, right? So you can change your selector to elements. Um, not that anyone should or would be doing this, but you could grab a little swath of elements and say, well, I want those to be super fine and hit mesh. And, uh, just keep in mind that we will keep connectivity between, you know, I can't change 
this because there's three elements there. So uh, there are some smarts in it, but um, just kind of keep that in mind. Okay. All right. So that's enough with the classic version. So how do we do all this in, in the new version? Um, that's a great question. Uh, so once again, I'll, I'll need to scale this. Um, in our scaling, we've actually put under this move tool, there's a little drop down here that will allow you to scale. Um, I'm going to scale these surfaces. And then I think by, by default, it, it does a uniform scale. You could do um, turn that on or off and pick scaling a certain direction and pick a node. But you know, I just want 1,000 in each direction. And I hit enter. And all right, so now we're at uh, 1,000. OK. Then we go to uh, the mesh option here. We're looking at 2D meshing specifically today. And the general 2D mesh is going to be the equivalent of this panel on the left, right? So general 2D mesh. I don't know if any of you, you know, general general 2D mesh, you're a How I Met Your Mother fan, you got to do your little salute, right? So uh, general 2D mesh. Select your surfaces, and then all of the detail that is included in the um, in the the, the 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 classic interface is in our hamburger menu, essentially, right? So um, element size, mesh type, uh, uh, element element type, um, element order, where do they go? And then these are the curvature-based refinements, um, not particularly interesting on this model, but uh, so that would be the same kind of type of thing as this surface deviation type mesh, right? So if we did a curvature-based refinement, you know, edge deviation, surface deviation, this is where you go and put in your factors of Target element size, growth rates, um, deviation from the surface or from the edge. Okay, so all of these options are are in here. They're just kind of the advanced options, and in this little place. Okay, so once again, we'll start in this corner. Um, I think we did a mesh size of five, so I will get a little micro dialog box. I can hit five here. This is like basically the minimum amount of information that you need. Right? What size of an element do you need? Uh, so I go ahead and hit mesh. I did forget to change that to quads only. Um, so let me go and do quads only. Uh, element type mix quads only. Hit mesh. Okay. And uh, interesting. Oh, curvature base. I don't want that. So, um, sorry, I just checked that to, to show you. I was wondering why I wasn't getting in my interactive mode, and it's because the curvature-based refinement um, uh, allows you, uh, switches this to automatic instead of interactive. Okay, so now this will be the default. So when you go um, into your default, as you open this up, unless you have changed anything, uh, you will see this interactive mode. And then also we put you into a coloring schema Let's make uh, not wireframe elements, a coloring schema for element quality, right? Because uh, we, we could do element quality. You can come and color by element quality over in the old GUI and classic, I mean. Uh, but it didn't put you there automatically, right? So you kind of had to, to go there. So now we get this. And also we get uh, a few nice things as well. Um, you probably realize that you can go to these and uh, each one of these uh, has a little slider bar that will show min and max size. Uh, we have the same thing over here as well. So once again, you can show min and max size and get some, some nice options here uh, within the uh, contour. So same uh, principle here. I can enter inter interactive mode. You can change the number and the density. Uh, it's not right click and left click dependent now. It's just going to say, well, what would you like to change that to? You remember, right click does other stuff. Um, so you know, I can go you know, 12. And you can pick multiple edges in which to specify or set, et cetera. Yep. Uh, so that would be the density. And then you could just do it, also do an element size. Okay. So that's the interactive mode. Um, but something that I think is particularly interesting for aerospace uh, would be the what we call um, panel mesh. Okay, so. Under this little drop down from general 2D mesh, you'll see there's a few other, you know, kind of, I don't want to call them types of meshing, but I suppose they are types of meshing, uh, just different ways to mesh parts. And, and one of them is panel mesh. And this is a, a really kind of a nice tool that does 
the linkage and all the quad only type of options for you. So um, especially on parts like this, I'll just kind of grab a swath of these. I'll use the same uh, option here. But now by default, it's going to link these edges, okay? Meaning that if I were to change, you know, one of the, the seedings in say this direction, all of, I didn't mean to click that one, all of the, the densities in that direction are going to be changed accordingly, right? And then also the, the mesh updates as soon as you change this as well. So you can kind of see the live, you don't have to go and click it. Remember I told you I'd save you some mouse clicks at some point. Uh, so you can kind of see that density in order to maintain the quads, right? So in order to maintain quads, this is what we have to do. So all of those get linked. So this panel mesh is quite nice, uh, but just keep in mind this panel mesh is very specific. It only meshes essentially squares or rectangles or things with four edges. So even though this isn't technically a square, kind of curved, it has four four continuous edges, right? It's one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, these little, these surfaces with the holes did not get meshed. And if I try to mesh this with a panel mesh, it says it's not uh, mappable, right? So, um, and the reason it's not mappable is because there's a little tiny circle. Okay, so, um, you know, if, if you really like this mesh option, then you'd have to go back to the geometry, maybe do some splitting and maybe just come and split that off, okay? So obviously now the uh, surface here is, can, be, can be meshed. Um, we'll still have some problems with, with this, but this can be adapted if you so choose. Um, let's see, we might be able to do something like this, where you split this a couple times. And let's see. Oh, do do do, do panel mesh. Mesh those. Okay. Um, not 100% certain why it didn't mesh these two, but uh, if you split to the diagonals, I know it'll, it'll mesh. Uh, so the, the panel mesh um, is, is quite a, a nice tool for aerospace um, to really quickly get you these nice structured quad meshes. And as far as uh, 2D meshing goes, right, it's, it's still very dependent on your underlying geometry. So, you know, make sure your geometry is cleaned up. Obviously, I didn't do a lot of geometry, any geometry cleanup um, on this model. Um, if you wanted washers around these, you can go and, and split those out. And much like previous versions, uh, the, um, the underlying mesh will update as you go and edit the underlying uh, geometry. So if I did want to go and say, put some, some washers around these little tiny holes, okay, um, you know, I can, can click on them, right? And the underlying mesh will get uh, updated as well, as you can see. And the uh, washer split size is kind of small, so. Um, Okay, so I think that's what I wanted to talk about for, uh, for 2D meshing for today. Um, next time we're talking FE geometry, which is very interesting. This is a, a quite different paradigm shift. And FE geometry will relate to kind of this idea of what we call orphan meshing, the bulk data file when you bring in stuff that doesn't have geometry, right? Um, we have some really, really cool stuff for that. Um, and this, this idea of mesh versus geometry Budding heads is no longer really going to be an issue because we'll treat them basically as one and the same, uh, which is kind of exciting. Okay. Uh, so with that, I hope everyone is doing well, and we will uh, talk next week.